Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a rendered animation sequence uh, using the Arnold Renderer in Autodesk Maya 2019. Um, so uh, I'm just continuing where I left off with my bouncing ball animation. I've got three bouncing balls here. One's just a generic sphere and then the other two are uh, the uh, bouncing ball rig I provided in the canvas shell. So um, with that being said, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get started here. Um, another thing I want to show you is some lighting. Uh, we've covered like photometric lights and area lights and I, I showed you a, a number of them. But I also want to cover the physical sky because I think this one's really cool. So you'll see it comes up AI physical sky and then I also have my sky dome light. Um, let me bring my attribute editor higher. So you'll see that in my physical sky you see a, a little bit here and just by default I'm going to do Arnold render and see what happens so you'll see I have some physical sky but um, my horizon line stops about here so I need to make it a little bit bigger for my ground plane so what I can do with that is I can go right click on here because I've already um, locked the layer and I can do select objects and if I zoom out far enough you'll see that you can actually set this to come just outside of it and I want to see if that helps with the render so I'm gonna try to re-render just one little scene and you'll see that I have just a smidget of it hanging off so what I think I'll do um, I'm not going to actually worry about it, but what I would normally do is just bring up my ground plane, but then I would have to change all of my animation. Oop. And Arnold render. And you'll see I've closed that gap on the, uh, on the uh, horizon line. So just an FYI, but I'm going to bring it back to where it was because I don't want to have to redo my animation. Um, this is merely just an example. So. I also have, when I created my physical sky, I have something here called my sky dome light. So in my attribute editor, I have it, the intensity set at 1, and I'm selecting that in my outliner, which is Windows uh, da, 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 Outliner. I have mine, per, uh, I keep mine permanently docked over here. Um, so I can click on my sky dome light, and I can increase the intensity of the sky and the lighting. So I'm going to start with, let's just say 5. 5 seems like in the middle. And let's just see how much brighter it is. And you'll see now I have more of like a daylit sky. Um, depending on which angle I view it from, I'll probably have a little bit more light on this side. So the, the light is coming from this direction down to cast the shadow on the opposing side. So I guess I'll render it from this side. Um, and I'll go ahead and close this. So this is just an option. It will increase your render time a little bit. So um, if you're worried about render time, just go ahead and skip uh, creating the sky dome light. Um, but you do need to create lights. Don't get me wrong. If if um, I recommend it just to try to uh, get a cool little render going, um, but you don't have to use uh, something uh, this extravagant. I think it would add more render time because it's lighting a lot more areas so um, it needs to calculate the lighting and how it bounces off objects and things like that a little bit more uh, when you have this much light coming into a scene so anyway um, that being said I'm happy with the tone of the sky um, I've got my balls bouncing here and I want to go ahead and um, under my rendering tab over here in the top left corner I'm going to go to rendering and here I'm going to go to render and settings. In here my Ar render using Arnold Renderer and then I'm going to set it to be a PNG. It, you could set it to be whatever. A JPEG is totally fine. I'm going to leave mine at PNG and then interlaced 8 and then I need to change my frame animation to name number dot extension. I believe by default it's uh, actually I'm going to name underscore number dot extension so now it's gonna whatever the name of the file is so mine's the ball animated um, and now when I create this it's gonna create an image sequence so 
Um, I'm going to set my frame padding. Yours may be at one by default. If I increase it to, I like to have it at least four. I think four is a pretty good number, especially if you're getting into hundreds of frames. So like maybe you're animating a sequence that's like 540 frames, which I think is like 30 seconds at 24 frames per second. Um, that extra zero helps a lot. So if you're doing anything more, you know, you get into, you know, the thousands of frames, then I would include an extra frame padding for an extra zero just in case. Um, and that's if you need it if you need to render more after that and include in the same image sequence this way uh, the numbering system will be there for you and set and you won't have to kind of mess around with stuff so having that extra zero trust me in the long run is a major help um, if you get and when you get uh, to larger um, scenes so I've got my frame frame animation extension to name underscore number dot extension my frame padding I'll leave mine at 4 and then my start frame is going to be at 1 and my end frame is going to be at 20 down here I can set my image size to presets if you don't have a powerful computer render 320 by 240 uh, if, if it takes a long time to render just render something small this is going to be a much smaller resolution but it'll render much quickly and it, it won't uh, take as much time and it'll be easier on your computer so just do something extremely small that's totally acceptable plus it'll be shorter to upload anyway um, I'm gonna just for uh, this I'm gonna do HD 720 and then um, I also have that'll be 1280 by 720 aspect ratio uh, I, as far as that's 1280 by 720 pixels excuse me and that's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio so 16 by 9 aspect ratio basically means widescreen right and 4 by 3 aspect ratio would be like a square television one of those box TVs um, to give you uh, an idea of what aspect ratio is and um, these are the pixels so um, Anyway, and then you could do maintain ratio or maintain pi pixel aspect, and this you you change it to 1900. It should, and it didn't. Oh, maintain width. So let's do this 1280. I just wanted to show you. You need to make sure that this is selected, and then you'll automatically keep that. And let's just say 9, 2000. And now it's 2000 by 1126, and it's going to keep the same aspect ratio. Um, width height ratio so and I'm gonna go back to HD 720 okay so everything else in here is fine just uh, renderable camera will just set to perspective you can turn this on or off I don't think it's gonna matter if you have the sky in there um, with the sky it's gonna you're not gonna be able to have an alpha channel because it's rendering that sky in your image um, just so you know um, but anyway, I'm going to keep it as is like this, and I'm not going to really touch any other buttons in here. This should be good. And I'm going to go ahead and click close. And now I'm also uh, going to show you. So your, your, your viewport here doesn't maintain that aspect ratio. So like what you see here isn't going to render exactly as you see in the render. So I need to go to view, and I'm going to go to camera settings and resolution gate view camera settings resolution gate now from here what I'm gonna do is uh, what this box is everything inside this box is what I'll be able to see in my scene when I'm rendering and what I would like to do is just keep it off I wanna keep the balls out of the scene at first and then have them enter screen bounce and then take back off so that's how I think it would be cool um, it'll create a cool looping animation, um, and I think that'll work. So, bounce, bounce, bounce. All right. So now I have that all set, and I set all my settings in my renderer. I'm going to go to render and render sequence. I'll hit the settings button. Perspective is fine. All of this should be fine. I'll check. Oh, and one more thing before I render this sequence uh, this is a really really important part to take note on I need to go to file and set project file set project now what this does is when I go to file set project what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to 
uh, locate a folder in which I want this to go to. And mine's going to be module right here. And then I'm in this folder. I want this to be it. I'm going to do set and I'm going to do create default workspace. When that pop-up window comes up, hit create default workspace. So this will be your default workspace for this in that folder. So now when we render this, if you don't do that beforehand, it's going to go in some Maya folder somewhere in your C drive that's going to be really difficult to locate. Um, so by skipping that uh, sort of by doing by setting the project first we're skipping like a whole lot of uh, searching later um, going through our program files and stuff like that it's it's just kind of a pain so this makes it much easier um, so I'm gonna do now uh, render and I'm gonna do render sequence I'm gonna hit this and I'm just gonna click the alternate output file location just to see where it takes me and it brings me directly to that folder where I set the project to so I'm sure that's gonna be fine and I'm just gonna keep all of this and I'm gonna click render sequence and this is gonna take a few minutes so um, I'll go ahead and start that now and then when it's done um, we're gonna jump into Premiere so render sequence and close wait for it to render it'll take a little bit of time and then we're gonna come back and do uh, a little editing and stuff in Premiere. We're just going to render it out in Premiere. So, all right. Uh, I'll be right back. All right. So, my animation is complete now. And um, I'm just going to close this. So, it rendered out all the frames. So you'll see down here, it'll say sequence rendering completed. And now we're going to go ahead and open up Premiere. So here in Premiere, I'm going to do New Project. This is going to come up. I'm going to set the location of this to where it's going to save. I'm going to save it in this folder. Select Folder. I'm going to name it and everything by default should be fine I'm keeping mine as the op uh, engine software only um, your scratch disks should be same as project which is this is basically where all your stuff gets saved so just leave it as default um, and then uh, display format you can do frames so in this case I could do frames I'm just gonna leave it at time code for now um, but I could switch it to frames if I was doing anim like really heavy animation kind of thing um, but I'm gonna leave it a time code and then the other thing I'm gonna do is capture format this HDV is fine um, and this is totally fine I'm just gonna leave it as is and press OK now in Premiere what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to uh, file import and you're going to notice I have in my, this isn't it. it, it, all the images saved into this folder. I'm going to create a new folder and call this uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just put these in here because I prefer it to be in this folder. Okay. So now that I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and open this folder and you're going to see all of your images that uh, exported. So it exports frame by frame, so frame one, frame two, and you'll see even though I have it named the ball animated underscore one, I have it set as when it ex exports as uh, name underscore number dot extension. So it's the name of it is the ball animated underscore one and then the extension number or the the number of it is underscore zero 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 one zero 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 two etc and then dot png the file type so i'm going to click on the first one and make sure that this image sequence is checked this is an image sequence so just click on the very first one make sure this box checkbox is selected and then go ahead and click open 
it's going to import in here. You could also, if you wanted, you could right click in here and do uh, import. It's the same as file import. So with that being said, I'm going to click and drag this over here. And if by uh, any chance you get like a pop-up window that says, would you like to change uh, sequence settings to match format of file or something like that, click yes. You want to change the sequence settings to match this file. Um, now, in here, if I hit play, you'll see it plays. And I have one frame that's just entirely... That's the last frame, so it shouldn't be playing that. But um, if I want, I can select my little razor tool here and just cut off the last frame in case. Yeah, I don't even need to do that. But that's how you would cut your animation and then delete it. So I just cut cut it there, selected that one spot, and deleted it. But I think this is totally fine the way it is. So now I can hit play, and it just plays. Now, one other thing I'd like to show you. I'm going to delete that real quick. And if I show you here, if I right click and I go to modify, interpret footage, in here I can assume this frame rate at 24 frames per second. That's what FPS stands for, frames per second. And then I should be good to go and click OK. And now when I click and drag this over, I'm going to do change sequence settings. So if this popped up before, I'm going to do change sequence settings. And now if I play it, it should play a little bit slower. And there we go. Perfect. So that's me scrubbing through it uh, with the arrow keys one frame at a time. OK. And that's my animation. So now what I need to do is I need to do uh, Make sure you click inside of this box and just do File, Export, Media, or Control-M. File, Export, Media. It's just taking a little bit. Just give it a second. So once this pops open, what uh, we're going to do is we're going to change a couple of the sequence settings in here uh, for when it exports. Um, we're going to change the format to H.264. And what this is, it's a compression format that uh, I find and, and many others find uh, to be um, the highest quality but at the lowest file size. And and at the end, it's still going to, it'll probably still be a decent size file size for just a you know, a one second animation, um, but or less than a second. But um, H.264 is a good one. And then I'm just going to do match source because I, I don't want to change anything like that because I already changed the sequence settings. I need to click on this and show you in here. And I'm going to delete that. Um, you can locate where you're going to save it to and export okay and click save and now I'm gonna click export again okay so now that that exported I can locate it in my folder it's this one so you'll see I have this little bouncing ball animation anyway uh, here is our bouncing ball, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, shoot me a message, and uh, I'll respond to you as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching.